Now moving on to our uh, first speaker of the session, uh, Professor Mustansir Verma from TIFR Hyderabad. He will be talking about uh, core training in aggregation and fragmentation systems. Over Thank to you, you Professor Verma. Thanks a lot, Sueli. And just remind me after 10 minutes. Yes, sir. Thanks. Okay, so before I start, let me convey my real gratefulness to the organizers, uh, to Kavita, Shakuntala, Trajit. Um, I gather that besides the three of them, there's been a whole band of people behind. Uh, so, you know, I'm really grateful to all of them for organizing this meeting. Um, you know, the hard work that you all have put in, I guess, uh, 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 you know, is a measure of esteem and affection. Thanks. And all I can say is that they re reciprocated in full measure. Thank you also to all the speakers and the audience. Thanks. Okay. So let me get going with the talk. Uh, yeah. So the work was done together with Argo Das, postdoc here, and Chandrasekhar Ayer, who's a visiting student who's doing his master's here. And uh, the question we'd like to address is the following. Um, in the process of coarsening, which refers to the approach, the late time approach to a steady state, is it always true that the uh, uh, state within a coarsening length is actually similar to or sort of governed by the steady state? I always used to think it's true, but uh, we found a counter example, and this is what I would like to share with you today. So this uh, 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 fact, or the, not, not fact, this uh, uh, point does not seem to work for certain aggregation fragmentation systems. And, uh, you know, so this is what we'd like to address. The work draws on earlier work uh, on aggregation and fragmentation systems with Supriya and uh, Satya and Himani and Madan Rao and on coarsening with Kavita. So let me uh, go ahead. So let me remind you about coarsening. So this refers to, as I said, an approach to steady state. We start out with a very high temperature, random initial condition, let time pass. And we would believe that after a long time, we'll approach a steady state. And I'm interested in steady states which show a degree of order. So we go from an uncorrelated uh, you know, uh, initial state to a state with strong correlations. And the process by which we do it is called coarsening. How does the order develop in time? Well, the traditional in, uh, picture, and which is of course correct, the essential insight is that there is a growing length scale, uh, which I denoted by script L of T, which grows as a power law in T. And here it is, it's uh, uh, depicted here. These patches are growing and there's a strong correlation between patches, weak correlations, uh, you know, uh, strong correlation within patches and weak correlation between patches. Um, a very nice feature that emerges in many coarsening systems is that the correlation function, the two point correlation function, shows scaling. I mean, this is the sort of illustrated here for some system that uh, 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 shows that the correlation function is a single scaling function of the separation divided by this growing length scale. Now, the conventional wisdom is that so long as, uh, you know, you're uh, talking about separations which are large, but much smaller than L of uh, T, the state should resemble a steady, the, the steady state. Well, uh, actually, this point seems to break down, as I said, for models of aggregation and fragmentation. For instance, in steady state, what we'll find is that the order parameter fluctuations are contained. By contained, I mean that the fluctuations grow as the system size to some power which is smaller than one. So the ratio of fluctuation to system size goes to zero. But during coarsening, the order is fluctuation dominated within L of T. Okay, what are the models I'm going to look at? I'm going to look at models of mass, masses. I'm going to look, they are particle models and each particle I'll imagine has a unit mass. So these are mass models, they're moving, um, uh, masses move, they aggregate on contact, single particles chip off, and uh, the maybe more. So there's a familiar model known as the zero range process in which 
particles chip and combine. And there's also something called the conserved mass aggregation model, CMM, in which in addition to chipping of um, uh, uh, particles, you can have overall movement of a cluster on a set. Now, both these models show uh, a, a phase transition in the steady state. There's a critical density below which the state is sort of normal, things are spread out, but above which they're still spread out, except at one site, there is an infinite aggregate. So this point, this uh, aggregate I'll refer to as the condensate, it has a mass, which is a finite fraction of the total mass. What we will do is we'll use extremal statistics to track the value of the mass. All right, so for a particular, let me first talk about the zero range process for a certain type of hopping rate, uh, dependence of the rate on the mass, the phase transition occurs at a, a, a point uh, rho equal to rho c, which is well known. And uh, moreover, uh, in a very nice paper, Evans, Majumdar, and Shear have worked out the form of the extreme value distribution for this, which the extreme value of the mass, of course, refers to the condensate. So they, they've worked out the profile of the condensate. And what, what one finds is that it is a Gaussian. It's not one of the familiar extreme value distributions because we have a strongly correlated system here. And uh, the uh, 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 spread is known. And uh, you know, it's, uh, for, for delta, which is, uh, uh, so, sorry, for B larger than three, which is the parameter here, the state is a simple Gaussian. And here is an illustration of what it is. So we can, here's the initial condition, coarsening going to the final steady state. So we're going from, the well-known Gumbel distribution, which describes uncorrelated uh, 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 variables to something that is uh, correlated, which is the Gaussian in this case. What we'll do is we'll think about bins of size L of T, and we'll ask for the maximum within each bin. And so that I've depicted in red here, the rest are not the largest in this. And if we look across bins, there are very weak correlations. So if we look at the maximum of all the maxima, then clearly we'll get the total, the, 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 the largest value of the mass in the full system. And that ought to be distributed gumbel wise because there are only weak correlations between these, even, so even while coarsening. But within bins, there are strong correlations and one could ask what is the distribution of the maximum within the bin? Okay, so here it is. Uh, we look at the asymmetric uh, version of the zero range process. And in bins of size L of T, what we find is uh, there is very good scaling. So here are the plots uh, for the probability distribution function, um, uh, unscaled and scaled. And you can see there's a collapse here. This is a cumulative probability. And scaling, of course, implies immediately that both the mean and the standard deviation grow like L of t, or the variance grows as L of t squared. But then you land up with a quandary. How can a variance which is growing as L of t squared, how can that reconcile with the steady state variance, which we know from the uh, exact uh, solution grows like order, I mean, as a is proportional to capital L. After all, L of t will approach L. So how do these reconcile? So to study this, we actually looked at the variance of the global maximum. And this is what we found. This is the mean. On the left is the mean, here is the variance. So the mean grows monotonically and approaches the value it should, namely the condensate mass. But look at the variance. The final value is right here, okay? But on the way, it doesn't go monotonically. It has a huge overshoot and then falls and goes to the final value. What's happening? So the time dependent variance exceeds the steady state value. I mean, through some giant fluctuations. So the state while coarsening is sort of determined not by the steady state, but by this free asymptotic regime with very different fluctuations. What are these? Well, before we come to that, let me just say that uh, the same pattern repeats in the conserved mass aggregation model. There's a phase transition in steady state, which is well known. In the condensed phase, what we find uh, is that in steady state, the variance of mass fluctuation is known through earlier work to grow like the system size to the three halves. 
Okay, this is uh, mean, meaning the standard deviation grows like L to the three quarters, which is smaller than L. It's well contained. But while coarsening, again, this distribution is a function of, uh, is a scaling function, which again means that delta n star squared grows like L of t squared. Here's the evidence for that. And uh, again, let's ask for how the mean and the maximum grow. So the mean saturates very nicely monotonically to its you know, final value. But once again, the variance shows the strong overshoot before it comes and settles to L to the three by two. Okay, so, um, uh, okay, let me then ask, why does this happen? Okay, is there a picture of what is happening? So the answer is the following. Uh, so look at this picture here, or this picture below. I mean, basically what we're saying is that in each bin of size L of T, there is a quasi-condensate, but the strong fluctuation is reflected in the fact that these heights are very different. Why are they different? Well, one way of saying it is that after all, you know, many peaks have to disappear as we coarsen. So naturally, a large mass will go away and fluctuations will be huge. Can we rationalize uh, and understand, you know, actually what is going on in a slightly more quantitative or, you know, a better way? Well, it turns out before you reach the steady state, there's this sort of quasi state, which is referred to as saturation in the ZRP. Uh, which uh, was studied uh, by Rosinski, Schultz, and Spoon, where before we find form the final condensate, you think of a situation where there are two uh, large uh, condensates which are exchanging mass far away from each other, but eventually uh, one will go. Sir, Verma, you have two more minutes. Okay, thank you very much. Right, I'll, I'll complete. And uh, uh, so these uh, large uh, uh, condensates, uh, are exchanging mass, but you know each at some point carry mass of roughly L over two. So L over two has to become either zero or L. So you can see that the fluctuations are indeed huge. So it's this state really, which is governing what is happening during coarsening. I mean, uh, it's not really the final steady state which is doing it, but this. What about in the CMAM, the conserved mass model? Well, there it turns out there's a, a you know, of course, uh, you know, it, it, these condensates do disappear. But remember that besides just mass exchange through currents, there's also the motion of the condensate because you remember clusters move around and they come and, you know, uh, attach to other uh, clusters and condensates. And well, turns out that uh, some years back, Himani Sachdev, uh, Madan Rao, and myself, we looked at the steady state of this model, but with open boundary conditions. Now, if you uh, look at that, the, basically what happens is that the condensate can diffuse around and because the uh, uh, boundary conditions are open, it can just leave the system. And when it does, the mass comes crashing down like this. So this is uh, what is happening in the steady state of a system with size capital L. Well, not so different after all, because L of T you know, is an open system. I mean, there's nothing that blocks this condensate from going there and induces huge fluctuations uh, uh, in the uh, in, in, in the mass. But be that as it may, I mean, uh, certainly the behavior during coarsening is not the behavior in steady state. So this is my last slide, and I just want to leave you all with this. You know, so what we are thinking of is that we're starting with a random state. Here's the mass aggregation model. Here's the ZRP. Here are the steady states. What we're saying is that the, it's not the steady state which, which determines what is going on during coarsening, but there's you know, other physics which is going on, not the steady state physics, which is determining what it is and causing enormous giant fluctuations in, um, in the mass. Uh, we understand this also in the CMEM, and uh, it's coming from, uh, okay, I, I, I'm sorry, I mixed up uh, what, what I was saying. This is the ZRP, and that is the CMEM. But anyway, uh, we understand what is happening uh, through the analogy to the open steady state. So uh, 
the road to steady state, therefore, at least as far as the condensate is concerned, is fluctuation dominated, even though the steady state itself is not. Within LFT, the condensate characteristics are not determined by steady state, rather they're determined by these intermediate clouds. And of course, uh, I haven't uh, given you the evidence for that, but we've checked that the conclusions also hold for the symmetric ZRP, also in two dimensions, at least in the same and in the process of checking ZRP. And uh, this is where it is. Notice there are these other roads also. So these refer to other quantities. There are other local quantities which go very nicely to steady state, uh, I mean, uh, whose behavior during coarsening is determined by steady state, but uh, I won't talk about this. The condensate certainly is not. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Verma. Uh, now we can take a few questions. Uh, Mahindra Verma, you can go ahead. Uh, hello, Mr. Azir. Hi, hi, Mahindra. Nice talk. Thank you. So, so we looked at uh, TDGL equation at uh, time dependent and Okay. And there, uh, steady state is, of course, one and minus one or minus one. Uh -huh. But uh, before reaching the, the final state, question state, there's a lot of uh, this anti kings and kings pairs. Uh -huh. And there is a lot of energy flux. I look at the flux. All right. And uh, so I think, so I agree with you completely that uh, um, the final state. Uh -huh. And the approach to final states are quite different. So okay. I'll share that. Well, yeah. we are just thinking about it and I'll All share right. the result with you. Yeah, it would, uh, would you like to come in? Yeah, I would uh, say it would be very nice to check the fluctuations and to see if the RMS fluctuations are, are as large as the mean. If they are, that would be really quite interesting. It would be in line with what I'm saying. Here. I see. Okay. Thank you. Any more questions? Yeah, please. Can I ask a question? Uh, yes, yes, sure. Uh, hi, Musansi. Hi, hi, Sansi. Ah, that is a very nice talk. So, just one question is this. Uh, so, if you look at the variance, which is in this uh, growing state, which is a function of um, this scaling function, right? M over L, L of T. Right. Uh, so, so this, this scaling function, I mean, what happens at the critical point rho equal to rho C? There okay. also does it, uh, is it non-monotonic also? Uh, I, I believe it's not. I can't remember right now how carefully we have checked it, but it is okay. not monotonic. It is not non-monotonic. I mean, non -monotonic. It, uh, there's nothing odd there. Okay. okay. Is, uh, you need a finite condensate to do this. Yes. I see. No. Okay. In, in that you. case, of course, as, as you all have commented, uh, Freshe uh, dominates what is... That's good. right. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Okay. Thanks. Uh, any more questions? Uh, yeah, I have a question. Yes, Rahul. Uh, so uh, I'm trying to understand this behavior in the intermittent state. So uh, uh, it seems to me that these uh, regions of uh, size L, they're in contact with each other yeah. and they can exchange sort of condensates between them, which leads to like high variance. But once you have a final system where it's all one subsystem, like yes. L becomes uh, capital L. Yes. So, but what if I connect to a bath which can throw in a condensate once in a while? Right. Then would that lead to uh, like the high high variance in the final state? Yes, indeed. So this is uh, exactly what uh, the the situation that Himani, Madan Rao, and myself we, that we studied. So we had an open system in which we inject only single particles on one side, but uh, the uh, rule for leaving was that anything can leave from either side. Now, right. when, when that happens, uh, in, you, you don't inject condensates, but the condensates leave. And so you can see this a big crash here. This is in yes. the steady state. This is an intermittent steady state. Right. Okay. So it's exactly what your intuition is saying. Okay, thank you. Any further questions? Um, just a, a very short question. So say, I mean, how generic do you think this is? I mean, well, what should a dynamics have in order for this phenomenon to take place? Um, not very sure yet. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, so far we've looked only at aggregation type models, 
Mm. I mean, the ZR free actually beyond uh, you know the form of uh, hopping rate that I talked about also has uh, you know uh, 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 other forms of hopping rate where you always have a condensate uh, or you never have a condensate. So if you always have a condensate, it could be that these still show up. I mean, we haven't investigated yet, but uh, uh, so. I mean, I, I, yeah, I, I, actually, I'm not very sure, but uh, okay. Uh, okay, I have, I have, we can, we can talk. I have a couple of models we can talk about later. Okay, surely, yeah. I mean, that that would be great. Yeah, I mean, uh, earlier there was, uh, you know, some thought that it could have been uh, lack of equilibrium or detail, but, but it's not that. The symmetric um, uh, version of the ZRP obeys detail balance, and so that, you know, that's definitely not the, you know, deciding factor. Okay. Thank you. Okay, if there are no more questions, then let us thank Professor Verma again for the nice talk.